For those in the north, the panels use energy they collect to power elements to keep the surface temperature a few degrees above freezing. They're heated. No more ice and snow on roads causing traffic delays, accidents, and injury. Excuse me, young man, am I being led to believe that this thing is some sort of thing? Yes, it's a thing, a real thing. No more shoveling your driveway and sidewalk, no salt corroding your car, or wasting tax money on snow removal. And you can ride your bike or drive your motorcycle all year round. Whoa! The heating elements will keep the road surface snow and ice free all winter long. Um, I have concerns about the future. Is this thing even possible? I told you, yes. Solar roadway technology was invented by engineering couple Julie and Scott Broussaw in 2006. They're too humble and wonderful to yell at you over the internet, so I'm gonna do it. You need to know about this technology. You need to get behind it. You need to share it with everyone you know, because this is actually happening. Whoa! But now a grassroots effort of concerned and inspired people can push this project into independent production. If we vote with our money for projects we believe in. Heaters in them, so you never have to worry about snow plows anymore. Want to save this planet and make it sustainable for your kids and all future generations of life who can look back and say, hey, at least they invented solar freaking roadways. Yeah, so those of you who've been following with some mirth, what $2 million of Kickstarter money and a further $2 million of government money can do. Imagine if the pavement you drive on would never ice over, didn't have potholes, the lines light up on their own, and the pavement would generate electricity. A small company from Idaho named Solar Roadways is making an impression on MoDOT. And they, Federal Highway, as well as Solar Roadways, are ready to deploy. And we are the DOT that are working with Federal Highway and Solar Roadways with some Federal Highway research dollars to begin that first public deployment of their technology by a state DOT. We will launch a crowdfunding campaign. Again, the first state DOT in the country to do something, we're gonna launch a crowdfunding campaign. Um, we believe that there's a lot of fans of their products, Solar Roadways, that want to see it deployed. Now, you've got this. I mean, I know. let's see, what's the worst place in the entire country where you might try to locate such a project? I don't know, let's say the furthest north you can almost get, where it's going to get the least sun per year, and where it's going to get coldest, where you're going to get large snowfalls. Yeah, that's the place to build a solar roadways prototype. A roadway prototype, I should stress, which has never had a car drive on it outside of some photoshopped graphics. Now, it might be an apt time to reflect that if those exact same solar panels had been put on a roof, they would generate about 10 times as much power for about 5% of the installation costs. Now, that's not to rubbish solar power. Solar power is actually pretty good these days, with modern installations paying off their installation costs in just a few years. Indeed, it's not to rubbish novel forms of solar. You see, while driving around America last summer, not only did I visit solar roadways at almost the most northern part of America, I also drove to this remarkable beastie in the Las Vegas desert. It's as simple as you get. You just use mirrors to focus light onto a central boiler, which then uses that to generate steam and run turbines. These are solar farms of one sort or another. It's all the light that hits those, gets uh, focused on the bit in the middle, where it boils water. They're pretty, aren't they? Uh, burn birds, apparently. Birds fly into the beams. Uh. So effectively, one heliostat can power one California home. So Tom Doyle is the CEO of NRG, power. the company behind this $2.2 billion solar project. Workers on site call them streamers because of the smoke plume created when the birds ignite in midair. Can't 
really see what the point of that part is just outstanding. There's one. There's number two. There's number three. They are actually amazingly pretty. I thought that it's the story of one of these kings who got all these men to polish their shields and they focused their shields, focused the sunlight on the um, on the ships and the ships all caught fire. Uh, thought occurs you might actually be able to weaponize those things in really quite a nasty fashion. So the, I just got this really nasty idea that if all those mirrors, mirrors were to suddenly sort of swivel and point at me, just... I, I don't think I would sort of evaporate into a whiff of hydrogen, ozone, and carbon monoxide, but burn like an ant in a magnifying glass, certainly. It's like having three little suns that actually just sat there in the in the desert. Now, sure, their first shot was kind of a hit and miss. In fact, they only generated about half the power they expected, but after a year or so, they got that up to 75% of what they initially expected. Now, let's just put that into perspective with solar roadways, which generated about 10% of what a comparable acreage of solar panels would have done if you'd have just put them on the roof. And now it's down to about 0%. Now, bear in mind, electricity costs about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So in a day, at its prime, in summertime, solar roadways was generating about 10 cents of electricity per day. And a couple of months later, when it was a little more overcast, it was generating about one cent per day. I mean, seriously, if they'd just put a wishing well in town, it would have earned more money for them. And now it's down to generating a stunning zero cent of electricity per per day. And that's not including all the power they have to pay for to heat the panels and to run the LEDs. I mean, I did this video some time ago showing that there's actually quite a lot of power consumption for all those LEDs, and a lot of that goes into heat. So it's absolutely crazy at the moment. It's been cold in Sandpoint for so long that all they're doing with all the heat that they're putting into this is they're just heating the ground up from minus plenty below freezing to just minus a few degrees below freezing. They are completely wasting all of that energy. Anyway, I digress. Then there was this coalless Wattway thing, which was in a different league altogether to solar roadways. You know, it's a much more practical solar roadway without all those LEDs and heated panels nonsense. <laughs> Let alone all that sort of, let's have Wi-Fi enabled panels with microprocessors and all that sort of thing. It's technology that replaces all roadways, parking lots, sidewalks, driveways, tarmacs, bike paths, and outdoor recreation services with solar panels. And not just lifeless, boring solar panels, smart microprocessing, interlocking, hexagonal solar units. I mean, seriously, what were the people thinking, giving this Looney Tunes nonsense $2 million in the first place? All to cheers of adulation. Seriously, some of this stuff just needs to be seen to be believed. So for instance, 2017, a smarter path chasing genius from National Geographic. 2015, Scott and Justin attended the Makers Fair Detroit at the invitation of Innovation Nation and had a display in their booth at the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation. 2015, awarded $750,000 by the Department of Transport. 2015, Solar Road Waste was featured on the TV show Innovation Nation. 2015, Solar Road Waste was mentioned in the online version of President Obama's State of the Union address. Then, of course, they got the backing of celebrities like Nathan Fillion. 2014, Popular Science, one of the seven best of what's new engineering category in the 100 greatest innovations of the year 2014. Popular science. 2013, we are honored to have US Senator Mike Crapo, <laughs> not a joke, Republican Idaho, film this endorsement for us. 2013, Scott was the keynote speaker at the International Parking Institute 
annual conference. 2013, Solar Road Waste was featured in the General Electric Focus Forward short documentary. 2013, Scott Solve for X Talk, Google Headquarters, New York City. 2013, chosen as one of Google's moonshots. 2011, General Electric Eco Imagination, powering the Home Challenge winner. Solar Roadways won the Community Award for the second time. 2011, awarded another three quarters of a million dollars by the Department of Transport. 2010, TEDx Talk Sacramento, California. Scott was honored to accept an invitation to deliver his TED Talk. He received a standing ovation and we enjoyed talking to the audience members afterwards. And so it goes on. Anyway, coming back to Colas Wattway, how do they compare to a regular solar installation? With Colas Wattways, they cost about 10 times what a regular solar installation would have cost and generated one third of the power. A third the capacity for nine times the cost based on real measured data. There is no way to spin this thing that this is a good idea. You just can't argue with demonstrably true measured data. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> this is still much better than solar roadways, which cost 20 times as much as comparable sized solar installation and generated one tenth of the power. In fact, it's got me thinking that folks like me and Dave from EEV Blogs here are starting slowly to get the cracks to form in this thing. In the, the mainstream media articles covering this are starting to be a little more skeptical about this sort of thing. Not just pimping out the misleading media hype. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, what's that? China's built one now too? Look, I can tell you now with absolute certainty that when the data rolls in, it will be almost exactly the same as the Colas Wattway thing. Because the problems with building a solar roadway are intrinsic. The bare minimum that you need is solar panels that won't get destroyed. Then you need all the wiring and power transport infrastructure. And that's just dumb because there are plenty of places to do this where the power infrastructure is in place and you've got lots of spare space where you don't have to drive cars over your solar panels. I mean, really, you're just making a rod for your own back in putting the solar panels in one of the most high stress environments that you can get. And all it took was a lot of videos, a couple of million dollars of Indiegogo funds, a couple of million dollars of taxpayers' money, just to show that the simple back of an envelope calculations that you could have done trivially at the beginning of this were correct. I mean, sure, you can build a solar roadway. It's just a really, really expensive way of generating electricity. It's like, it's like making a car out of a potato or something in the hope that it will get better gas mileage because it'll catch the wind better or something. And really, does anyone want to give me odds how long it's going to take before people start to realize that the Hyperloop is bullshit too? Sure, it's like solar roadways. You can make one where the tube alone per kilometer costs about the same as solar roadways. And that's not including any of the magic that goes inside it, like building the spacecraft that are gonna have to travel at supersonic speeds through this vacuum tube. And the only thing that exists so far is this fiberglass shell. <laughs> I mean, sure, dude, it's a capsule that's gonna run in a near frictionless environment. So you know what's really gonna help? Making it streamlined and polishing it. Sure, you can build a Hyperloop. It's just a really, really dangerous and expensive way of transport. It's kind of the same reason why we don't drive around in jet-powered cars. I mean, why not? Jet power would provide great acceleration and great top speeds. Sorry, boys, but the Hyperloop is just solar roadways on steroids. It's just, it's strange just going out into the Las Vegas desert and seeing this enormous tunnel running, running across the desert. And that is the entire Hyperloop. Well, of Hyperloop 1 anyway. In fact, why not? Seeing as I visited them both on the same day, this is the solar power station I visited and the Hyperloop on the same scale. And if you can't see the Hyperloop, that's because it's quite small in comparison. Yep, that's it. The whole Hyperloop. Think about broadband. At the heart of it, 
is a network that has digital packets that go very fast. Three types of packets, data, voice, and video. And again, the internet is not something that you just dump something on. It's not a big truck. It's, it's a series of tubes. Think about Hyperloop. At the heart of it is a network with three types of physical packets. Packets of people, packets of freight, packets of car that can all go on a very fast pipe or con connection. We believe it's the emergence of physical broadband. It's big on hype, hype, hype. But in the long game, I'll bet you dollars to donuts. All that's going to be left is an empty, rusting tube. And if you enjoy this video, hell, why don't I live dangerously and give it a thumbs up and drop a favorite on it. And this video was made possible by donations of patrons of this channel. And if you want to join them and help this channel, you'll find the links below.